This podcast was recorded during the WGA and SAG after strikes. Without the labor of the writers and actors currently on strike, Wonka and a lot of the other things we cover on this podcast wouldn't exist. Oh my gosh, guys, you will not believe it. I got a package in the mail today. Oh. And like, can you guess where it's from? Um, no. It's from the Wonka factory. Isn't that crazy? Wait, really? I, I, I he, don't, it's been I so long since we've gotten anything from them. Us. Yeah, I was going to yeah. say. And it dropped down from the top of the well and down here. So I hope there's nothing breakable in there. Oh, um, yeah. Let me open up this package. What a package. E. <laughs> Two different it's interpretations there. <laughs> <laughs> it has a sound effect button, like those cards when you open them and they start singing happy birthday. He would. He would do that. So Yeah. Yeah, you open it. Every night in my dreams, <laughs> I see you. I feel you. That's so weird. You. It sounds like Wonka was singing that. Not Isn't it crazy? Celine yeah. Dion. But I'm looking in here, and, and thankfully not glass bottles, but it looks like we have some, like, plastic salt and pepper shakers. But they're perfume. Oh. Like, this one's shaped like a little fire truck. Is it, is it like, a liquid perfume, or is it a powder, if we're in, like, a um, salt and pepper shaker? I, mean, it, I can't tell. Okay. And that's here, disconcerting. I'll... Okay. Fire um, truck? So there's a, there's a piece of paper in here. Uh, he- uh, it says from Wonka, Hello. Uh, greetings. Fuck you. Uh, I hate Gorman uses Petrical the Third. He fucking sucks. So I'm uh... taking him to task with my new powder fume line. Oh no. Okay. Is that what he did with so... Spotty Powder? He didn't know what else to do, and so he just I used guess, that as a base? Yeah. He did bring oh, us into consult man. on that, and we said he should probably get rid of it because so, of. So this seems because of the very, history. uh, it seems like this came from some hatred that um, his perfume notoriously has not been as great as um, Gourmand, yeah. Patrick Holigus, the, the third, fourth. Um, okay, well, let's give these some whiffs. Yeah. Uh, cool. so the fire truck. I think I. <laughs> this is just chili powder. Like, I'm 99% sure that this oh, is just chili oh powder. Oh, God. Oh, it burns. <laughs> yeah, it burns your, your nose. Um, I've gone numb at this point. Because of Ooh. some sort of well disease. Oh, hey, um, how about this dolphin? Dolphin? Get... Oh, yeah, it's got a little dolphin. Uh, it's uh, the powder that comes out of the blowhole. Um, okay. No, it's just oh, salt. It's tuna. That's oh, it's tuna. tuna. It's tuna, but it's got like a vanilla undertone. Oh. Um, okay. Uh, yeah, not not great. And those are the two. Yeah, so, we probably shouldn't have the rest. I don't. Yeah, I don't no. think that's medically safe. I don't think that's safe. Um, yeah. so he's he gave me a little box to rate it one through five, and I'm gonna give it a three just because I I'm a little nervous what he'll do if I give it a one. He knows where but we live. He, yeah, he does know where we live. So and that's that does not concern great. Me. So I will just kind of throw that back up, and the rats will take it where it needs to go. You know what? That was such an awful experience. You know what could really like be healing for yeah. us. We create more fucking people for him to have to deal with in his universe because we are the gods of the Wonkaverse and we create his life. <laughs> it's not world fumer. anymore. It's, it's us. Just... <laughs> we have taken the crown. <laughs> Netflix, you may own the rights, but do you own the soul? You I don't. don't. Think so. We have the um, amulet. <laughs> the we contained. have the amulet. Hi, everybody. Welcome to Wonka Watch. Uh, This is a podcast where we talk about everything Wonka and also do almost creative writing exercises related to Wonka at this point. Uh, This is like a mid-tier improv class is what this is today. Mm, Yes. Um, And today we're just pitching more Wonka characters. We've done this before. Uh, It's one of our favorite episodes to make. I don't know if it's one of your guys' favorites, but you're just going to have to deal with it. Okay? Yeah. We deserve a break every once in a while. And and our break is making fucked up little gentleman yeah like when elementary school kids make art and you have to be like wow that's great oh, i'm felicia i'm elaine oh my god what's this in the bottom of the box <gasps> is it walk watch news that fucker yes. <laughs> we can't be safe 
Mm. He sent it to us himself. Uh, and the first piece of Wonka Watch news uh, is actually uh, a bit of a, not a retraction from us, a retraction that I'm putting on the world. <laughs> mm. <laughs> um, there's been a big, big stink about the Wonka Watch runtime being revealed. Um uh, oh. The Wonka movie Instagram post about it. I got a few articles about it. It hasn't been. I don't know what what people got in their heads that like it had. Because if you read the article, the article was from CBR, uh, and they said they they quoted it and they were like, "This came from the movie database. The movie database is a community built database. So like literally anybody could put that in there." And uh. I checked again today, and it's gone. So <laughs> okay. if it is, yeah, if it is later revealed as the runtime, okay, fair enough. But as of now, it is not. We have no actual no facts reason to, to believe base that's it. true. Okay, yeah. So hour fifty three se- is what they said. Hour okay. fifty three, which feels short. I feel like it's going to be longer, but yeah. I don't which know. like, do I want it to be longer? <laughs> I want it to be longer because of a prediction I made, but I don't. Oh, well, I don't want it to be longer. Take one for the team. It can't be longer. It just can't. um, <laughs> it'll be two. But and what half we're hours. talking about today. <laughs> For realsies is something that we've been said on Instagram and has been posted about a little bit. The Polish Wonka Kinder Surprise Eggs. Uh, Ooh, yes. It's a Kinder Egg Sweepstakes in Poland for movie tickets. And Elaine, I'm just going to have you go to the Instagram messages where someone sent us a bunch of photos of this because I am tuckered out writing this uh, is what I wrote here. So we're doing this free form. Okay. I'm very tired today, guys. And you know oh, what? Man. Sometimes I can't do all the research. So whoa, whoa! <laughs> we have the thing is, is in in this art, they make Timmy Wonka blonde when he's not, and that's the confusing thing. This doesn't even look like him at all. No, this is like if um like teenage Dan Stevens decided. To- yeah, it is so Dan. <laughs> A sentence I never thought in my life I would say. Teenage Dan Stevens. The 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 Sprouse triplet no one knew about. Yeah, yeah, that makes no sense. Yeah, it's like a short, straight blonde hair with a big old head, and then yeah. the actual like dolls are. <laughs> you have some action figures where they're just standing on whoa, like pieces of stone, and their eyes are so white, uh, like wide. You have Noodle and Wonka, and then you go down to the next one, and they're little gingerbread men, like. Hmm. They're like little, like it's like stickers put on a stick figure. Yeah. Um, wow. Okay. And the likenesses are not great. You go down no. another one. You have like Ooh. a spinning top. Yeah. With is on that Wonka left? on a beach? I think like, it's like fra- a framed it's photo. It's, it's like <gasps> me on vacation I when I went one. to Maui. I kind of want that one now. I know. Now he's like, look at me at Daytona Beach. <laughs> I had a great old time. I got a cotton candy. If he was a little weirder looking, he could almost be our walk, I feel like, but he's not. Um, right. Okay, we'll say there's what also... What is going on with the thing the on the fuck? right? Is that a is fan that like or a... a card? Maybe it's a card holder? I and feel then like it's one of those sound? viewers. Oh. Yeah. So one of the cards is horrifying because it's a close-up of... Uh, it looks like the me version of... Um, not me, M-I-I of uh, Timmy Wonka, but it's just the, the Sprouse triplet slash teenage dan stevens but now with possibly brown hair in this yeah in this print um you, you go down one more and there's like just like a little what? image of wonka flirty wonka? thing <laughs> I, I, yeah yeah i don't know and then a, there's a fucking fidget spinner shut the fuck up who else who's the third person wait who are these people oh they're all timmy okay sorry like one of them <laughs> yeah. looked like a, a different else. person um they're covered in like glitter shiny stuff okay that's um an assortment oh and they all have to fit in the kinder okay well not in it because you can't do that anymore but oh you can well, you might scan be able to them Poland. yeah you can scan them and play a little game with them so Cute. that's it um i'll have the links in the description so you guys can check this out and thank you to our uh secret wonka source for sending that our way we love you forever so yeah that that's our wonka news for the day uh he's spooky he's scary but it's a fun time now it is time for us to do our characters, and I have some scary paper notes to get myself away from the computer, and I have four characters that I have a little pitch for today. Fantastic. How many do you have, or are you I playing this I have four that I okay, will perfect. be um, now making up as we go. So, awesome. So um, I'm ready. <laughs> I, I have one idea that is fucking insane, and I think it'll just set the tone for the rest of my characters. So if you would like to start, 
I'm happy to go for it. This is the most built out one, so I think we'll we'll do this oh, first. Perfect, perfect. So my my first character I want to pitch is Wonka's nougat dealer, Emil. <gasps> Ooh, Emil met Wonka at a jazz concert uh, last year. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why that's the... Was that like a... Well, like a jazz concert. Was it at like a jazz bar? Was this in a venue? What I'm do, thinking a nice this? venue because Emil... Emil, you know, he deals on the side. He makes cash. Uh, but he doesn't deal nougat. He deals drugs. He deals illicit substances, right? Ooh, okay. um, so he was at the jazz concert trying to like get some middle-aged people who want to branch out. You know what I mean? Fair, yeah, And, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, Emil, by the way, is a senior uh, philosophy major at the local college okay so, there that you go out. that checks out he saw wonka and he was like that guy looks fucking eccentric i bet he'll buy something uh so he was like hey do you want any of the good stuff and wonka was like holy shit i finally meet somebody with nougat because wonka <laughs> <laughs> doesn't know how to make nougat and it's felt like a big blind oh, spot for him yeah. he doesn't really understand what it is and he kind of thinks you need to get it from like illicit means like i don't think he knows it's legal you know, mm, yeah. I don't know I if he's totally sure it's legal. So, Emil never turns down a deal, and that's like it's oh, crazy. Like Emil I never turned that. down a deal. Oh uh, he doesn't talk like that. He doesn't talk like Tim Gunn. I don't know why I did that. Um, <laughs> I make it a little jazzier. Make it a little jazzier. Emil never turns down a deal. Emil <laughs> never turns down a deal. I'm a co- I'm a senior <laughs> in college at the philosophy school. Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> you suggested it. I'm an old it. soul. He's <laughs> 72. Um, Emil never turns down a deal, and he was like, "Oh yeah, just like give me 20 minutes, bro." And uh, has been the supplier of Waka Factory nougat ever since. And he's not getting, like, shitty nougat. He's, like, actually trying. He's actually, like, learned how to make really good nougat throughout this process. Wow. So, you know, some homemade nougat. And Waka's rolling out some nougat products uh, about next month. Oh, wow. Well, that'll be wild to see how that launch goes. Um, I, I do want to know. I, I went through different options of what. <laughs> I wanted to have Wonka have a dealer for something. And my options uh-huh. were caramel, strawberry jam, or nougat. <laughs> <laughs> strawberry jam would have been fucking what? For him to think, nobody has strawberry jam. That's I know. Like... I was like, I, I think strawberry jam is funnier, but nougat is more realistic. Nougat because is if way, you search yeah. up nougat, the second Google thing is what the heck is nougat? Yeah. So I felt like there's something there because I I don't really know what it is and i did Same. learn it's like sugar and honey mixed together and like congealified hmm, um, okay okay i mean strawberry jam dealer is funnier i think but nougat dealer feels real i like the i like i like the world of, of nougat dealer now do we think wonka likes nougat has new has he even bothered to try it is he too afraid He's, uh- maybe he doesn't want to try it until he could get it for himself you know what i mean like he was getting he he didn't want to try it in a competitor's product you know so he needed to make it himself first but he never he just couldn't be fucking bothered and they didn't have it on linkedin learning um so (laughs) so there you go i don't know if he necessarily likes it i think he at least says he likes it yeah which would make sense because you don't want to you know pretend to put out a product that you've never actually eaten and i feel like he doesn't like to just make things for other people he makes things for himself very much so so that's a meal meal. that's what i have on a meal i don't i don't really have much more i feel like there's not much of a story to tell with a meal but i feel like he's a good addition he's just there well are you ready this was my page of notes for a meal that just like (laughs) so intense knowing what it is right meanwhile i'm just making sure i wrote down little ideas i have on this tiny orange index card (laughs) yeah are you ready for this, this oh i do want to only... let you all know sorry really quick before you oh, no, say this good. as i wrote these notes i wrote all these on different pieces of paper um i listened to celine dion to get me in the mood <laughs> of the world <laughs> i needed to put some music on i was like i guess it'll be fucking celine i guess i gotta do it <laughs> i love that so i'm starting off really tame are you ready mm-hmm. i introduce to you crispy the talking bass so wow wow (laughs) wow okay we go from the realism of the nougat dealer to the pure whimsy of crispy the talking bass now here you go here you go so crispy the talking bass is one of those wall mounted basses that you like press the button and it'll talk and normally those will sing for a bit they have certain catchphrases but crispy the talking bass is a little different so wonka found him in a dumpster behind a tuesday morning um behind what a, a shot behind a tuesday morning um is that that's a where you, place 
Oh yeah, that's it's like a um how would I describe it? I uh, thought they were in like such pure whimsy that he was oh, finding it behind the concept it was of a, a Tuesday, Tuesday morning. morning. <laughs> he found no, they're it behind kind of like a Tuesday morning. Uh, I'm like, this is not a fucking Anne Carson poem. Come on. It's like a big lots mixed with a TJ Maxx, okay, but okay. with that the makes crammed sense. stressness of an Aldi. That's oh, the an best Ollie's. I can do. This is what I'm thinking. I'm thinking of an Ollie's. Oh, an Ollie's. That might be very okay. regional. But it not... sounds like an Ollie's. Oh, okay. Ollie's sounds is like that, but if there were little signs with drawings of old men everywhere. Oh. Does Ollie's have on the sign this like mustached man and it's yes. just his face? Wow, okay. And I he's have... all over the inside too. It's like oh. Trader Joe's, but spooky. <laughs> oh no, I don't like that at all. That's Ollie. Anyway, so Chris <laughs> with the talking bass, you know, Wonka found crispy and have been trying to redecorate his second office so there's his first office that's just for him and then there's the second office that he shows to people to make it look like it's normal he has a red macbook in there for example a thermostat and now he has crispy the talking bass but he learned very quickly that this talking bass is a little different than your average joe bass and when you press the button crispy We'll try to tell you some fortunes. Now, so far, it's been 50-50, but recently, Crispy's been getting a little more accurate, and it's a little uncomfortable. So, for example, Wonka woke up, and he was very stressed about his new nougat release that's coming out in a month, hit a button, and he was like, okay, so with this nougat release, I'm just very curious, um, why why does he talk like this? (laughs) He talks like this uh, from out of my voice. I... I have a question. Yeah, yeah. We could go two ways with this. I'm fine mm-hmm. with Crispy the Talking Bass being more sentient. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. There is a chance, and I think we have established the factory ghost of Crinkles. So is this a possession element going on? But I, I, I like I, that idea. So, I'm ki- I am kind of enamored by the concept of Crispy the Talking Bass. Yes. You know, so there are a couple maybe different... he's being brought to life by something different... in the factory. Right. So I like the idea of like either he just had way more recordings and Wonka has decided that these predictions will come true, even though they're just kind of basic phrases still. Like if somebody else he came would. in, you know, it's, it's kind of like when people are like, oh, it's the moon. That's why everything's crazy. Even though it's like, no, you just fucking like you messed up. It wasn't the moon. You messed up, you yeah. know, like, like very straightforward. I just imagine him having moments where he's like, clearly that just totally decided what we're going to do as a Halloween party. It's going to be kelp. It's kelp themed. Um, and we're going to have kelp everywhere and a nice little seaweed salad bar. <laughs> Waka's sitting here. Crispy. What would I ever do if I got stuck in the Thames? Just keep swimming, Wonka. You're so right, Crispy. Right. <laughs> and that Crispy the Bass kind of turns into a little bit of a therapist for him, yeah, too. Yeah. You know? Like, there's just a lot, like, you know, sometimes it's hard to talk to a human. Mm-hmm. But to a fish? You know? To a mechanical fish mounted on your wall? Yeah. And I do want it to be known, it does say Crispy on the plaque. He did not <laughs> come up with the name Crispy. Now, granted, yeah. that is the, um, the the gentleman who created Crispy the Bass. He makes these in his garages, and his garage, and he goes to farmer's markets usually. And uh, <laughs> most likely someone bought this thing, realized it was worse than all the other ones. It didn't sing, and it just said stupid, stupid shit. Um, and then they threw it away while they were at Tuesday morning, because that's the best dumpster in town yeah as we all know it's got a nice wow. little uh, bouquet around it so yeah crispy the the talking bass uh a mystery um who from time to time is indeed possessed by kringles the factory ghost i like it i like every once in a while but not all the yeah. time just enough to like keep because i think kringles thinks it's fucking hilarious so if kringles hops in there to say something a little more specific we we keep wonka on we the keep line wonka going so to say um but I think us as viewers, maybe we don't know. We don't really know for sure. Yeah, that's where like does Crinkles end and where does end of the crispy. episode? Yeah, exactly. Crispy where Crinkles. Does... I have number two. I don't have a name for this character. I would love to. So if you have any ideas, I'd okay. love to hear it. But I thought we should talk about the producer of Wonka's reality show, right? Oh my They've gosh, yes. Exist. Um, so I'm thinking very much like a Miranda Priestly type, but also not. I've okay. also never seen The Devil Wears Prada. So just like that vibe. Do you know what I mean? I got you. Yeah. I've also I don't know anything she does or says in the movie, but like the vibes. 
So she's very detached from the project. I want to make it clear. She's here to collect her check and go home. Uh, but she does, uh, basically, her, the whole conceit of this producer is the show is successful. But she does not trust that this is lasting. Because she knows Wonka. She knows the thing. So she uh, is always trying to get a side hustle in. And that is a lot of what she's doing. So she feeds a lot of stories to the press about Wonka. Uh, gets paid for it. So a lot of the Wonka and Amari Guishan rumors, that's her. Uh, a lot of the, some of the stuff that got leaked about his feud with uh, Gorman uses Patrick Lafford. I forgot his name. That was also her. Um, ooh, ooh. And then I have just a, a bit of traits about her I wrote down. Uh, always holding at least two coffees. She keeps giving Wonka affiliate links for new hats, but he will not get the hint. Car upholstery, comma, velvet. And then my last note is every time she goes to the factory, she rants to her Borzoi about it for two hours afterwards. <laughs> so that's what I have for her. Wow. I feel like a... I don't know why I was like chartreuse. That's the name. Hey, <laughs> chartreuse she is fits the name. in. Chartreuse. It kind of fits. Chartreuse. <laughs> Chartreuse. Okay, she doesn't need a last name. Chartreuse. Yeah, Chartreuse. Just, that is the brand. Chartreuse. So I guess that's it. I mean, that's all I have for Chartreuse. It's not a. It's not a. It's not a huge character, but I, I think she's good in the periphery. Yeah. Uh, no, no, no. I love that. Okay. So, <laughs> what does candy come in, Felicia? Boxes. Boxes and wrappers, correct. And what we don't just have anything on those boxes and wrappers. We have designs. So I bring you one of Wonka's graphic designers for the wrappers, Kevin. Now, Kevin used to be a graphic designer at LuLaRoe, which, if you are unfamiliar with, they were known for their buttery soft leggings, but turned out to be a giant pyramid scheme verging on a cult. And the designers had to create 100 designs a day. A day. And what they started, yeah, no, this is for real. Um, and what they had to do is just to hit quota, um, LuLaRoe was also known for their very chaotic designs. They would just take things off the internet sometimes. So there's some copyright issues. They would be like, okay, take literally take yesterday's design and last week's design and lay them over each other, change the color. Like, they're pretty awful. Yeah. Okay. But Kevin brought in his samples and Wonka didn't really care um I imagine he has somebody else actually who does most of the hiring out I forget if we have an HR person at all um who does oh, hiring. that's that Craigley could be... that's Craigley oh Craigley Craig that's right so Craigley as HR um was kind of went over um because Craigley loves a good magic eye and it just reminded him of that so just for the the kookier designs of candies that's when we bring Kevin in Kevin really makes things pop and um, so Kevin is f uh, famously known for uh, one rapper that went viral. What this, you know what it was? It was draft one of the nougat candy bar. Perfect. Um, yeah. And so he thought, what if I put, the <laughs> you know how like candy bars sometimes like, like a Twix, like there's like yeah. little lines, <laughs> got a little veiny nougat bar. Um, okay. He, yeah. You know, and that was, uh, he, th he thought, what? Okay. Hear me out guys. What if we put the whole candy image on the wrapper, like those t-shirts you get on vacation where uh -huh. you wear the t-shirt, but it's this bikini body, but yes. you're just wearing a giant t-shirt. But so that, but for candy and Craigley was like, well, that's about maybe the best thing I have ever heard in my entire life. And I'm sure Wonka is going to highly enjoy it. Um, it. Go full steam and then we'll have a board meeting and then we'll talk to him about it. I don't know why. Oh, correctly. I'm so sorry. Our accents but, are getting yeah, more flexible. And then we, I feel like we used to be better at this. <laughs> okay. So we have a Peñas uh, nougat thing. And the, the good and the bad is that Wonka didn't notice it at first. He was like, okay, that's like the best thing I, I can't do his voice but he, he was basically that's like the overjoyed. best thing i've ever seen guys yes it's so good people it's the thing i think is packaging it really just like makes the whole thing mm -hmm. like we don't it, the chocolate's the good part and i love a design i love it i love a glitter i love i love a shiny now this is where things get really rough so the first image released of the candy bar is not just the candy bar by itself. It's Wonka joyously holding it up and giving it a little kiss. Yeah. And you can see where that, that went horribly wrong. Yeah. And there was a lot of uh, editing people did, um, and it was all over the news. Uh, but the good thing is uh, everyone know, knows about it. Uh, so there you it go. Kevin, 
Kevin, in a weird way, really killed it with the marketing. Um, <laughs> and Wonka's like, we rename it Penugget. Pen, 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 like, Penugget. It's great. Penugget. Penugget. It's good. It's great. I love it. It's so good. Oh, delightful. Delicious. Noog nuts. Ah. Noog nuts. Noog nuts. Ah, how we feel about noog nuts? I love noog nuts. What if that's like like he's ha- he's he has a whole nougat line coming out? So he's got the yeah. bars, noog nuts, which are just these round nougat balls. <laughs> and yeah. then- pack of two, coming to pack of two. Uh huh. And uh, yeah. <laughs> it <laughs> was that was that both of us trying to be. Is there a cum joke we can make? <laughs> yes, that was. Yeah, that was. Yep. Yep. I'm glad we were both um, there. We were like, where's the cum? <laughs> Where is it? <laughs> I was that's like, what the people are asking. I'm like, that's Nugina. not that's not it. Nooges. 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 Wow. Fuck. That's amazing. <laughs> Who knew so in this that's... episode not only would it be introducing more Wonka characters, but yet again we'd be introducing new candies <laughs> into the Wonkaverse. You guys get a BOGO. We're building a world. We're, we're, we're building. Yeah, we're world building. Uh, One of them was the comedy podcasts about <laughs> non-storytelling comedy podcasts with the most world building on the planet. You know when you world build for your Wonka podcast? <laughs> Crispy the fuck of that. <laughs> Christine the talking pet. Did you, you guys know? According to the Wonka Watch podcast, Wonka has a mechanical fish outside of his wall that he found in a dumpster behind a Tuesday morning that he believes gives him prophecies, and his name is Crispy the Talking Bass. You know what? We've said it once, and I will say it again. I will feel like we've accomplished what we came to do if we somehow affect Wonkapedia. Like if yeah. we somehow get involved or if we Here's create something that has to be accepted by the fandom that's when i feel like as soon as success. as soon as the studios get over these strikes get pay up pony up it's not too late yes. to put a crispy the talking bass in the background yeah not at all you could still so do it i don't want you to do it until you pay your actors yes but after exactly. that we give you permission to place yeah. crispy the talking bass also and actually i think for wonka too would I prefer Crispy the Talking Bass in the background? Perhaps. Perhaps I would. Perhaps I would rather than me being on set and having to leave my home. Perhaps I would prefer just, you know, a nod. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Just con- consult us. Consult yeah. us. Yeah. Consult us. We can put in Easter eggs. Um, it's fine. You call it. Yeah. You we'll ruin out. your film. Yeah. We love it. And Wonka 2, Wonka releases candy nooges. <laughs> nooges. <laughs> not to Wonka Watch Nug Podcast. Nuts. <laughs> Nug nuts, nooges, and nougat. There's a, wait, there's not a pun for the new dick. I mean, new, new, new dick. New dick. Nougat. Nude git. Nude. Like nude. The nude git line. <laughs> nude nude dick. dick. New dick. <laughs> no, it just says nougat and then in italics, le penis right underneath. <laughs> nougat le penis. And it has candy, but also a perfume that comes <laughs> Yeah. Nougat le penis, nut get, and nuges. <laughs> the, the collection. The collection. And then it comes with oadia penis. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. I didn't know we'd have so many penis jokes this episode. Who knew um, the penis would be everywhere? <laughs> anyway, reset. What's your next character? I have Wonka's intern, Connor. <gasps> yes. So Connor is the gay couple with dogs as nephew, bringing oh it all together. God. So this is like a oh nepotism hire. Not, I mean, not they're not related, but you know, it's connections. Um, and the gay couple with dogs was like. Hey Wonka, we have this nephew who's like really trying to find his direction in life and is really looking for an internship and can't find one. Do you think you would have a place with you? And Wonka was like, "Oh yeah, sure, I, d- I totally, I got it." And Wonka did not have a spot for this guy. Uh, so really, Connor is just kind of the glass elevator bellhop now. I guess elevator attendant. <laughs> that's I, that's a better thing. I, I guess bellhop. <laughs> that's not the right word. I'm not realizing, but it's fine. So, but the thing is, is Connor. Wonka doesn't take the glass elevator that much. He likes to talk a big game, but he stays on like two floors in the factory. Can't blame him. Yeah, that's fair. But he really just stays in the same area. So Connor, when he was bored, he went to every floor, starting at the top, right? He got to explore all around the factory. He got to check it all out. Uh, But the problem is, uh, he eventually got to the bottom. And as we all know, the bottom floor on the glass elevator 
is Minus Land. And he did get stuck in Minus Land for about three months. Connor very much managed his own schedule. And him and Waka never interacted that much. They thought it was all good. And uh, Connor posted a lot about being a digital nomad. So people thought he was just doing that, you know. But it Mm. turned out Connor was actually being a digital nomad in Minus Land. But at the end of it, he managed to tame the Ganulis and is king of the realm. Nice. That is what you call networking and making networking. that job work for you, not you working for the job. Yeah. That's amazing. He had a very, like, House of Hades esque journey that's going to hit for, like, three Ooh, people. Yeah. Um, I support you. <laughs> does, um, does Connor, like, debrief over brunch with his gay uncles with dogs? Because they love, they love a good brunch, if I recall. Um, uh, yeah. I'm sure that they would be, like, tell us everything that is happening in there. I, I can imagine. And I, I feel like they're probably also leaking some stuff to the press. They're big gossips. Um, yeah, that checks so out. So Connor's kind of like an inside man, but not, not for anything except for his his uncle's, <laughs> like, entertainment. Yeah. So really, the uncle sent him there just to kind of give them inside deets. So that's Connor. That's what I have for Connor. Now, I don't, I don't think we have this yet, so I can pivot. You let me know, but... I introduce to you Shy Glizzy. And Shy Glizzy works for the FDA, the Food and Drug Administration. Okay, Shy Glizzy. Shy Glizzy. It's her family owns the Glizzy Hut, lots of hot dogs. Um, yeah. Her real name is actually Sheila, Sheila, but she's so shy, everyone just calls her Shy. And then she was too shy to speak up about it and say that that actually really bothers her. But then it just became a thing. It's on her license. Like, that's just it. So, as you can imagine, might not be the most uh, forceful person. She she struggles a lot with uh, confrontation and uh, kind of putting her foot down. Which yeah. is uh, how Wonka kind of uh, arranged that she would be the main inspector that would come in and just check things out. You know, yeah. how are these candies made? You know, uh, because, uh, you know, we've seen... Some of the environments this candy is made, such as the the chocolate waterfall, open source, people walking around, a person yeah. fell in it at one point. Not great, not healthy. No, yeah. Um, I don't know how the machines are cleaned. Are they ever cleaned? Probably what is not. this mountain? Um, but Shy Glizzy actually doesn't know half of this shit. So what Wonka has done is he's created a whole like fake wing of the factory. Yeah. And it looks real basic. And so Shy Glizzy walks in there and Wonka just extroverts all over her. Just just lots of like, um, have you talked to my crispy bass yet? You should go check it out. Oh, you know what else is exciting? I just discovered that the color yellow is actually real. Isn't that silly? Um, and she just is like overwhelmed. And so she tries to get that out of there as soon as possible. Um, she is worried she's going to lose her job, but... Uh, Wonka, I mean, it's a really big factory and people seem to trust her at work. So she's just very nervous going around. She senses something is up. And I do imagine her at some point having this beautiful character arc where she finds her backbone and believes in herself and then begins a campaign to bring Wonka down that inevitably probably won't go well, but will be known in history so that, you know, a hundred years later, people will be like, oh, wait, that was fucked up. Yeah. So Shy Glizzy is like the the revolutionary, if you think about it. And I just think yeah. that's beautiful. So. I do think that's beautiful. I think that's she important. wears a lab coat all the time. It's just oh, her I love thing. That. Yeah. Icon. She has a clipboard. Nothing's on it. It's just something to do with your hands. You yeah. know? I you get that. You don't know what to do with your hands. So um, Wonka never remembers her name, though. Even though Shy Glizzy is a pretty memorable name. He just calls her, you. Yo, you're the evil one. Haha, <laughs> just kidding. She she accidentally gets locked sometimes in a room and she can't get out for a little bit um, if there's anything unsafe here it's the good advice of crispy the best <laughs> he likes to try to feed her candies and she's like she doesn't want to eat them yeah like the whole point is she's inspecting um but then out of politeness she does just keep eating them so when she finds the nougat uh line it's a it's a moment it's a moment for sure um but shy shy glizzy from the fda i love that my last one. I have no name except for uh, a, a title and a single bullet point. So my last character is a Wonka impersonator. 
uh, who makes county fair appearances, and Wonka wasn't mad until he started promoting pies. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, honestly... We could leave it there. You, we, we could leave it there, and the picture is painted. We all understand truly, what's going on here. Um, truly. I guess my only follow-up question is, I guess we have to discuss how Wonka feels about pie. I don't think he um, likes it. I think he doesn't like pie. But that's what yeah. this is built upon. That's This is the idea. The concept is that I think he inherently would hate pie, and I feel like that's yeah. a very clear character trait about him that to me. Out. To the point where, I, I don't know, I just can't picture him liking pie. It's like fruit and bread and those are two things he's not all that into you know yeah yeah for sure like i think he 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 thinks all baked goods are kind of lesser than but he can respect a cake he can respect a cookie but the pie is pushing it for him to him that's a breakfast that's not a that's not dessert that's a breakfast and he was fine with the wonka person he was like great last place that i gotta fucking go to raise my raise my uh prominence in the world fuck yeah uh but then this guy judged the pie contest and ate each plate of pie and was like, mm, my name's Wonka and I love pie. And he was like, no, I don't. No, I don't. So we got on the news about it and he was like, I want to make it clear this man is not me. And they don't even look similar. No one thought it was him. No one thought it. everyone knew this was just some guy pretending to be Wonka for like a fun bit, like dressing up as a character. Like, you know, like you would Dwight from The Office. Yeah. don't know why that was my point of reference, but yeah. I like or it. any other yeah. character. <laughs> or any other public figure. You know, no one thought it was him. But Wonka got on air and was like, and I want to make it clear, I do not support pie. I do not support it. (laughs) And Wolf Blitzer was like, really, Wonka? That's funny, because you seem to serve it in the cafeteria. At the the mess... What is it? The mess hall? The the catering. The catering company (laughs) served it on your reality show. That's not my thing. I wasn't in charge of that. If I had known about the pie... It would have been gone. In the garbage, I say. Put the pie in the garbage. <laughs> yeah, that's You know my out. bass, Crispy the Talking Bass. I brought my I brought my talking bass with me on the air. <laughs> what that's does he think about pie? Every what's, media stunt he brings in. What's, what's Crispy the Talking Bass have to say about pie? If it has crust, don't trust. That's what I've always said. <laughs> Wonka, there's been allegations that you're putting the recordings into Crispy the Talking Bass, and it's not, it didn't come like that, and because it kind of does sound like you, no, 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 I found Crispy in the dumpster behind a Tuesday morning. <laughs> he has a soul, I would never. <laughs> I just imagine Wolf Blitzer having Wonka on with Crispy the Every Talking crispy Bass, bass discussing his nougat line. The, t- the Tuesday morning. <laughs> Hey, Wolf, it's me again. I've got new shit. New shit. Woo woo. New shit on you the line. You can't say that on the air. You can't say that on air. I feel like this next segment's going to be a little difficult, Wolf. Because uh, I got a new line out. Uh, oh, and, yeah. and we all saw I went viral last week because I took a picture yes. with the new candy. Uh, but it was on purpose. And everyone said it was on purpose. It was on purpose. It was very much on purpose. I okay. did that on purpose, guys. Uh, uh, and um, I've introduced a new penile genitalian treat. <laughs> oh. Now, that is a little bit different. Um, penile genitalian <laughs> treat. Sounds like a dinosaur. Um, made of dicks. That was Sorry. wild. That was wild. <laughs> <laughs> so I got a new line versus nougat. A nougat <laughs> la penis, all right? That's the subtitle. Then we have mm. nut git and nuges, and then it comes mm. with wa de penis. <laughs> now, wa de uh, penis. Now we'll say Wonka. I have somebody else here. Uh, I'm going to patch them in. Uh, her We're name is Shy Glizzy. Oh, okay. And That's I'm fine. just curious. Uh, <laughs> I, I'm just curious what she has to say based on her yeah. experiences uh, in your factory. No, no it's so, great. It's awesome. Uh, I love this. This is Shy so Glizzy. Cool. Here you go. Hi. Um. Hey, Sarah. Uh, how's it going? Oh, sh- um, it's it's great. I'm so sorry. I'm yeah. Here. Um. I, uh, now, uh, Shy, you mentioned that there have been some things that you've been questioning about the factory. I. Um. You know, it's really big, but I only ever. I see get my nougat from there. reliable sources. Yeah. I um, just want you all to know, I get the nougat from a reliable source. I saw my a, guy Emil. A flyer. He's got his shit locked down. All right. Oh, Emil. Uh, you mean the famous 
A meal who never says no to a deal? Who yeah. won ba- deal or no deal? The what a classy same. guy. What a classy guy. A meal no guy. deal from deal or no deal. I don't, I don't, um, he, um, um, he, um, I, it's the best factory. Everything's so good. Actively good. Changing the world for the better. I don't know, Shy. And Thanks, Shy. I love it, Shy. <laughs> I'm Wolf Blitzer, signing off. I thought you were going to passion Gourmand, and I was going to be so mad. Oh, God, no. <laughs> no, I made myself have to talk Okay, to what myself. the fuck? Okay, I do think we need to establish what the fuck does the... Wa- uh, oh, the penis. What does that smell like? And how is it... Is that... Well, I think it maybe... I uh, think uh, it's molasses. Okay, yeah, molasses with oregano. Yeah, perfect. Something love it. it. Yeah, I love it. Sounds good. You ready for our next and fi- final person? Yeah, it's our final. I bring you Caesar Boss, historical interpreter who gives tours around the town. <laughs> and yeah. little known fact is that Wonka's factory was actually the site of one of the first. We got a couple options here. We can go with space. Okay. We can go with American okay. Revolutionary War, which weirdly enough could happen anywhere. I, you know, we, we can make a loose tie anywhere. Um, yeah. You know, when I went to Scotland, they had a whole Civil War monument. It was wild for the American Civil War. So, you know. Oh, wow. Okay. We yeah. got options. Um, I'm imagining Caesar isn't actually like uh, licensed because sometimes, okay. like, like I know in Charleston, you have to have a, a license to be able to give uh, tours. Yeah. So I imagine he doesn't have a tour license, and so he kind of has to do these very quick tours. Um, they're very cheap, which is how he, you know, you get Caesar Moss Airbnb gets a... experience. Yeah, yeah. Um, and he'll dress up also. Um, you know what? He's just really passionate about the War of 1812. And he thinks more people should know about it. And he decided that if the history isn't around you, then you can make it. So even though he is nowhere near where the War of 1812 occurred, um, he does have little rooms set up, like little little stops, like in a back alley. He just tries, like where no one goes, he's like put up little props. He has some mannequins he found behind the Tuesday morning. <laughs> yeah, um, behind the Tuesday morning. And he's like, where the fuck is my fish? And he, he has this whole little, like, set up with a campfire and, like, little stools. And yeah, he'll sit g- down. G- what is it? What's, what the fuck is the name of the show? Crispy the Talking Bass's brother. Uh, yeah. Um, oh, God. What's another adjective? Uh, Russell. Squishy. His brother, Russell. What's another uh, adjective? <laughs> Russell. I know. I changed my mind. I changed my mind a lane. Um, okay. And so one of those, there was two that went out back, and uh, Russell was actually removed from the mechanical thing and is, like, on a little stick and, and is on, a, and, like, uh, mm, mm. he runs a little uh, crank to turn it over a fire. Oh, yes. I like that. And I imagine, yeah, and I mean, I imagine um, Caesar Moss, he has a couple of, like, costume changes because, you know, he doesn't have a lot of other living history people around him, so he'll is sit down. Is it Caesar down. Moss or Caesar Boss? Caesar Moss. Ah, <laughs> oh yes so he'll sit down and like do like a whole this is what a spool was but he'll wear a bonnet um and he'll, he's not really good at acting and making you feel like you're in the moment so he'll be like yeah so i'm my name is abigail and i am here spinning some wool so i can make a blanket for my dying child yeah um and it's it's kind of sad but some people get a weird fascination and uh, enjoy it a little bit some people go missing and are never heard from again, but, you know, we don't really care about that. But um, he will stop outside the gates of Wonka, uh, the Wonka factory, and uh, has had to run away multiple times, was almost caught once by one of the security guards, you know, whatever Wonka's mm-hmm. security really looks like. Uh, just a trap door, I imagine. Um, but he was able to escape, so he lives on another day, but um, he just keeps making up new history. And um, he, he hasn't really decided if he, you know, should do the history of Wonka, seeing as that would be a big ticket item. He's just trying to figure out how can we continue to get people to know about the War of 1812. I love that. Yeah. I like how that's even, he barely even touches Wonka. He, he's in the universe for his lack of. Yeah. I imagine, I mean, like you see the Tinker Man outside of the factory. You see gay couple with dogs. I now introduce historical interpreter for the War of 1812. Caesar Moss. As part of that cast. Yeah. Caesar Moss. <laughs> Tinker Man. Tinker Man. Gay couple with dogs. Caesar Moss. And I, 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 I like doing, I just want to go through 
Again, I like picturing those shirts that have all the names on it because I think they're tacky <laughs> as hell. Yes. But imagine if we had one. We'd have Gorman Eustace Petrico the Third, Craigley, and Crinkles, and Crispy, and Caesar <laughs> Moss, and Connor, and Kevin, and Emil, and Chartreuse, and Shy Glizzy, and, <laughs> and Ta- Taylor Swift, <laughs> and um, John Mayer, John Mayer, <laughs> Seymour. Ooh, there's so many. Magdalena Merton. Yeah. How many characters? Too many characters. Oh my god. Too many fake characters. Wow. Oh. I love Crispy the Talking Bass. I'm fucking obsessed with Crispy the Talking Bass. Thank you and so I, much for bringing Crispy to the table. Thank today. you. I just love that that was the only one I pre thought of. Um. <laughs> it is wild that you were like, I also like when we were last on the call, you were like, oh, I'm going to prep. You're not ready for it. I'm going to prep so hard for this <laughs> yeah. episode. And I was like, no, the fuck you are. Yeah, no, you're right. Absolutely, you're no. not. <laughs> um, God, I do love Crispy. I do love that you're like, write that one down. Write that down. I need to. Yeah. I feel like the real star of this episode was the nugget, but... um, Yeah, I mean, honestly, that's the best thing. Wonka's nougat penis collection. Yes. Like, fantastic. Thanks, Kevin. Thank you for your your fucked up (laughs) designs. Predictions? Ooh. I... I feel like there's something here. Not with the lepanious nougat. I don't think that will inspire anything. I have Um, one. Oh, yeah? I think Wonka's going to interrupt a tour. You know, when they're going on one of their madcap adventures, they run through a tour for a little bit. I think that's something. I think a window will break. Perfect. We done it. We done it. You can't say we didn't do it. That is the (laughs) least stressful I've ever been about a prediction. That was amazing. Even when when I've pre-created them, which isn't often, but when I've pre-thought of one, I'm still stressed. We swam (laughs) on through that. Just like Crispy. I love that. Just like Crispy, the, his whole life before he was a wall fast. <laughs> I feel sorry for the people who skip this episode. Are going to be like, who the fuck is Crispy, the talking bass? Well, that's what you get. <laughs> that's, that's what, what you, you have get. to listen. This is a we have continuity. Episode. We have continuity on the podcast. <laughs> this is Wonka Watch canon. Wow. All right. Well, thank you everybody for listening to this episode of Wonka Watch. Uh, you know, if you've enjoyed listening, you can follow us on Instagram and TikTok at Wonka Watch. You can email us at Wonka Rapture at Gmail dot com uh and if you want to support us you can do so on buymeacoffee.com slash wonka watch our harvey girls commentary track will be up by now Ooh. and they'll probably be you know october's coming up i have a halloween costume thing planned that we're going to review Ooh. some wonka halloween costumes and we'll be doing whatever commentary track you guys pick for next month so if you want to go on there and vote on the polls you can do so um and you know if you support us you get a little song we don't have any songs to do today but just know it could have been you that sounds so mean. It that was so, amazing. It I so love that. Guilty. It could have been you. <laughs> I felt I, I felt too salesman I hated it, actually. I rejected it, it as soon you. as it came out of my body. You could it could be you. This could be you. And the weird you other subplot, it. the song universe I've created. Um, yeah. <laughs> I, Crispy the Talking Bass was important. Actually, the runtime yeah. is not important because uh, it wasn't even true. Yeah. The Nougat Kinder Lepenius eggs are actually kind of important. Nougat Lepenius felt important. I'll be honest, the things we contributed felt good. Uh, yeah. But it's the other Wonka-related things that don't oh, feel good. Not important. Not good. It's not that not important. important. Oof. Bye, guys. Oh, oh, crispy, hit the button. Whoop. Uh, you know what they say. When the tide is high, that's when you go swimming. Bye. Bye.